Well, I'm out in the shop making some off-season upgrades to the old B-Mod. One of the first things that's got to go is this old beat-up fuel cell. I was a pretty nasty wreck this past season where basically we ended up having to reclip the whole back end of the car in three days. Uh, thanks to my good buddies at Medieval Chassis, we were able to get that done. But we didn't have time to really do much of anything to the fuel cell. And after seeing that big old wreck at the dome where somebody's fuel got spilled, it was a big fireball, not to mention being involved in a similar incident myself a few years ago. I figured it was time for a new fuel cell. So here you can see a, uh, I guess you could say, an innovation that was uh, born out of necessity, basically because I have a hard time getting people to help me out in the shop. Replaced a couple of the bolts in the top of the fuel cell with lifting eyes. That makes the swap a pretty easy one-man job. Even in the event that the cell is full and you got to drag it out of there to fix a broken car. We got her hooked up to the old engine hoist and uh, yeah, we'll get her out and I'll show you the damage. And just like that, she's out. Honestly, the damage isn't quite as bad as I remember it being. We did try to, if I remember correctly, take this thing apart and pound out the sheet metal can, but it was bad enough that we weren't able to get the inner plastic bladder out of the can to really fix it. So, you know, I guess she'll be a backup in case I wad up another car next year. So this would be a good time to mention kind of a little bit about how the fuel system on these race cars works. It's a pretty simple system. We have to run a mechanical fuel pump and we have the option of running a return, but this cheapo setup here doesn't really have the provisions for that. You just have your suction line and your vent line. So this past season, I actually switched to running E85 in the race car. I know there's a ton of E85 videos out there, you know, the pros, the cons, all that good stuff. So I'm not going to rehash all that for you. But instead, I figured while I'm going over the fuel system, I'll kind of address what issues I had with it as far as the change goes and kind of give you a little bit of my personal experience as far as what it takes to run E85 in your dirt track car. So we already kind of looked at the fuel cell over here. We'll go through the system sort of sequentially in order. So the next thing, obviously, you come across is your fuel lines. And this is a Dash 10, AN Dash 10 rubber line. This stuff really isn't rated for E85, but I ran it the whole season without any issues. I didn't have any, you know, rubber coming apart or anything like that. It's normal good maintenance practice to change your fuel hoses every season in these cars, so I don't think that you're going to get a whole lot of corrosion issues as long as you follow that kind of rule of thumb. Now the main thing here is this is dash 10, which for those of you who aren't familiar with AN sizings, basically each number is equivalent to a 16th of an inch. So this is 10 sixteenths or 5 eighths of an inch ID hose. In the past, I've usually plumbed my whole system with dash eight just to keep it simple and because it's cheap. Um, we actually did run into some fuel starvation issues at the start of the season and up in the size to dash 10, specifically on the suction side, fix that. You know, a lot of people are probably saying, oh, you gotta go even bigger, you know, you need, uh, you need dash 12 or dash 16 or whatever. My first car, I ran dash six on the whole car because I didn't know what the hell I was doing at that point, and I never had any issues with it running on gasoline. But as we all know, E85 has about a 30% 33% higher, I think, fuel requirement to make the same power. So, had to up the size of the hose. Next up in line here, we got the fuel filter. And it's, you know, your good old-fashioned uh, canister fuel filter that all of us dirt track guys run.
know where the magic happens, obviously, with this bad boy is on the inside. Rather than a typical paper element, this is a stainless steel fuel filter element. And these are actually used not just with E85, but with other alcohol fuels like methanol as well. And that's done for two reasons. One is a paper filter is going to break down, or especially the glue that holds the paper filter together is going to break down because of the alcohol. But the other thing is specifically why you would use this with alcohol fuels and not with gasoline is because these filters can actually trap water. And with gasoline, all the water is going to separate out, so you might end up with the filter getting clogged with water molecules. That doesn't really tend to happen with alcohol because alcohol and water are, I think, miscible or miscable is the word. Not mixable, but it's kind of like that. And it literally means that they can mix and kind of occupy the same space molecularly. So, yeah, fun fact about that. Next up in the order is the good old-fashioned mechanical small block Chevy fuel pump. Now this pump is a little bit more trick than the units that we ran when I was running on gasoline. For one thing, I have heard that alcohol can deteriorate the bladder inside the pump. So on this one, it's got, I'm sure, some kind of special, you know, polymer or whatever bladder inside it that doesn't do that. Also, it has a little bit higher fuel delivery rating. I think this is 130 or 140 gallons per hour. I got by with... As I got by with, I think, an 80-gallon per hour one when I was running gasoline. Uh, you know, the math says you can use a lot lower than that. And back when I was running an, uh, an Eco Mod, E Mod, I used a 40-gallon per hour pump and had no problems with it. But, you know, overkill is underrated, right? So this pump is rated at, I believe, 7.5 PSI, which is about what you want for a Holley carburetor. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can run a return, and they do make a higher pressure version of this pump where you could run it with a return and have rock-solid fuel pressure. That's probably the right thing to do, but this is cheaper. And, of course, next up would be the carburetor itself. This is a pretty badass unit for a two-barrel, honestly. It comes from JDR Carburetors, and there's just a few things about it that are different to allow it to work with the 85. Uh, the gaskets and all the other materials in it are upgraded to be alcohol compatible. It's got a little bit bigger needle and seat in terms of the actual ID of the, of the seat. So that, allowed, that allows less restriction for higher fuel flow. And of course, all the various different passages inside the carburetor are increased in size to effectively meter that extra fuel flow as well. And one more thing I wanted to talk about with this carburetor. You guys that have run methanol in the past or are familiar with it are probably familiar with the horror stories of how if you let it sit in the carburetor even for a night it can cause massive corrosion and basically ruin your fuel system. You know you have to flush the fuel system just about every time. That's not really an issue with ethanol like with this carburetor. There was a couple times during the season where it had to sit for a couple weeks and it fired right back up. But it can, if you let it sit for too long, gum up, gum up the works. Now, obviously when the engine blew up at the end of the season, that kind of put a damper on my spirits. I didn't really work on this thing for a while. I let it sit for quite a while. And it did get a little gummy from sitting too long with the 85 in it. So that's going to be another video down the road is going through rebuilding and cleaning this bad boy. So here we have an item that's not part of the fuel system on the car, but it's definitely part of our system, so to speak, as far as how the race team works. This is an E85 tester. Now obviously one of the big benefits to running E85 is that it's a lot cheaper than gasoline, especially right now with race gas in a lot of parts of the country being over $15 a gallon. But E85 out of the barrel is still pretty expensive. It got upwards of $10 a gallon by the middle of the season. So I actually switched to running the stuff out of the pump. So the way this thing works is you fill it up to the blue line with water and then fill it up the rest of the way with E85. Now those of you who have messed with this stuff in the past know that the stuff from the pump isn't actually true E85. It can be anywhere from like 50 to 83%. It never even really gets to 85 
So as I mentioned earlier, water and alcohol can kind of occupy the same space. So you put your allegedly E85 in here with some water, you shake it up. Eventually the gasoline wall separate, separate out to the top. And wherever that separation line ends up on this scale here, tells you what percentage of ethanol you have in your gas. And that can be important for obviously tuning your carburetor, all kinds of good stuff. Now one final thing that pertains to running E85, and that's the cooling system, represented here by the radiator and possibly the world's most poorly fabricated but yet still somehow effective fan shroud. Now the general stereotype is that the engine's going to run a lot cooler with the 85 because it's theoretically always running richer. However, I didn't really experience that, maybe, maybe a little bit, not super noticeably. That's definitely a your mileage can vary kind of thing, and obviously you have to learn how to tune with the 85, similar to how you had to learn to tune the carburetor with gasoline. It can be a little bit di more difficult to read the spark plugs because they don't get dirty as fast even when the engine is running richer. So, yeah, it's not a fix-all. If you're having heating, uh, overheating issues, just switch into E85 won't necessarily solve that for you. And I've never really had a chance to compare it back to back on the same engine because I ran a different engine this season than I did last season. So yeah, there you have it. That's basically my experience with running E85 in the race car this past season and an overview of the fuel system components involved in making that happen. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like. If you enjoy our videos, give the channel a subscribe, follow us on Facebook, all that good stuff. And of course, thanks to our sponsors like Medieval Chassis, Powder Works, Adrenaline Spike Designs, Creative Care Consultants, St. Pe Peter's Synthetic Oil, and Enterprise Realty and Auction. We'll see you guys in the next video.